Howdy swim fans, here with another episode of Whiteboard Wednesday. And on today's episode, we're talking about Adam Peaty's incredible world record in the 100 meter breaststroke set at the 2018 World Championships. His swim was absolutely amazing and we should expect nothing less from the defending Olympic gold medalist. In this video, we're gonna talk about the mechanics of how he went so fast, 57.1 seconds in the 100 meter breaststroke. And we're gonna talk about what some of the common elements are among the best breaststrokers in the world. So let's talk about the race. 100 meter breaststroke started out with a blazing 0.57 reaction time. This is among some of the best athletes in the world are under 0.7 or 0.6. At 25 meters in the race, he's at 11 seconds. He's going 25 meters from the block into the water to 25 meters in only 11 seconds. His first 50 meters, he was out in a 26.75. For reference, his existing world record in the 50 meter breaststroke is a 25.9. The best breaststrokers in the world can't even go under 27 seconds. He's taking out his 100 meter breaststroke in 26.7. And on the second 50, he goes a 30.3, taking 25 strokes. His combined time is a 57.1. If you can imagine how impressive this swim is, the next fastest swimmer ever is to go a 58.4, and that was Cameron Vanderberg set at the 2012 Olympics. Adam Peaty going into this race had 13 of the fastest 100 meter breaststroke performances of all time. And his teammate in the lane next to him put up a 58.6, which is also incredibly impressive but they look like nothing next to Adam Peaty. Let's break down the time and see how he went 57.1. If you remember our swimming equation, you have your swimming time is equal to your reaction time plus your underwater time plus your turn time, and that's added to your cycle count, your CC, multiplied by your stroke rate. We'll link the swimming equation video below, but try and follow along as we go through this. So I broke apart the two 50s of the race, the first 50 and the second 50, because they're a little bit different. On the first 50, you have the reaction time off the block, then you have the underwater pullout time. That is added together to be, in addition to your cycle count times your stroke rate on the first 50, the part that you're swimming. So Adam Peaty was 0.57 off the block, incredibly fast. The time it took him to go from leaving the block to taking his first stroke, which includes most of the pullout, was about 5.1 seconds. Now he took 20 strokes on the first length, and he did that in the 26 seconds, including that stroke time. So his average stroke rate was 1.05 seconds per stroke. We multiply it out, the strokes cancel, and then when he added it all together, that's how he got to a 26.75. Now we'll come back to that. Let's talk about the second 50 first. On the second 50, your total swimming time is equal to your turn time. So from the time your hands hits the wall and then you push off the wall, the underwater time, and your, that's added to your cycle count multiplied by your stroke rate. On the second 50, his underwater time from the turn all the way underwater through the pullout until the first stroke was 5.3 seconds. So actually a little bit more so on that pullout, but that includes the touch and the turn as well. He took 25 strokes and his average stroke rate was 1.0 seconds per stroke. So he was swimming for about 25 seconds and he took 25 strokes. So his total time on the second 50 was 30.35 seconds. The thing that makes this so interesting, especially about an athlete like Adam Peaty, is that his stroke rate was actually roughly the same across the entire 100 meters. Traditionally, even some of the best swimmers in the world, their stroke rate will actually increase on the second 50. You see this in the 200 breaststroke much more so than in the 100 breaststroke, but if you notice, Adam Peaty's stroke rate on the first 50 was 1.05 seconds per stroke, and only 1.0 seconds per stroke on the second 50, which is only about a 5% difference. So if you think about it, he was able to maintain his speed and his intensity throughout the entire 100 meters, which is actually really incredible when you have enough speed to go out in a 26.75. Now, if we break down the numbers and we take a step back, there's a few elements that the best breaststrokers in the world, including Adam Peaty, 
all share. And these are things that you can apply in your training and in your competition so that you can swim faster and smarter breaststroke than ever before. The first element is having a strong kick. Beyond the fact that Adam Peaty is an incredibly strong athlete, he stands 1.9 meters tall, he's 96 kilograms, he really is a true athlete. But the kick is really the more important element of this. Having a strong kick with strong legs and the technique of that kick is as important, if not more important, than most other elements of the stroke. In breaststroke, unlike the other strokes, it can account for 70 to 80, if not more, percent of your total propulsion in the stroke. In other words, most of your forward momentum is driven by your kick. So if you don't have a strong kick, you have no chance at being a fast breaststroker. In addition to having a strong kick, you have to have fast recovery of your hands and with your ankles. So this is called foot speed, hand speed. If you watch the best breaststrokers in the world, including Adam Peaty, they're able to recover their hands and bring their hands back to streamline, get their body in a straight line on top of the water, high in the water, high body position, very, very quickly because that is the most inefficient part of the stroke when you're recovering. So the best breaststrokers have a very fast recovery. Thirdly, they have a very narrow kick. So it's not enough to just have a strong kick. If your kick is too wide, what happens is you actually increase the amount of resistance you have in the water and that increased propulsion of having a big kick, having your legs be wide, is actually negated. So the best breaststrokers not only have a strong kick and they recover it very fast, but it's also very narrow, meaning your knees are just inside the line of your hips and your shoulders. The only part of your, of your kick that sticks out of your body line is your ankles and your feet and part of your shins. The rest is all hidden behind your body. So you have all this power in a very compact, small kick. The next element that is true for all swimmers, regardless of their strokes at the top level, is a very high body position. So if you want to swim fast, you need to swim high in the water. That means at the end of every single stroke, returning to a neutral body position, and the higher you can have that body position, meaning your head is looking down, your hips are up, and your legs aren't dragging in the water, the better off you're going to be. After the high body position, we notice that the best breaststrokers have incredible distance per stroke. They have so much efficiency that they have a low stroke count, meaning they're not taking that many strokes. If you look at Adam Peaty's race, in a 50 meter pool, in a long course Olympic sized pool, he took only 20 strokes to arrive at 26 seconds, which is absolutely insane. If you compare Adam Peaty with other world class breaststrokers, he actually does not have the lowest stroke count. But remember, the swimming equation is actually a balance of not just how many strokes you're taking, but the stroke rate and that distance per stroke. So finding the right balance, which is different for every single athlete, based on your height, weight, power, technique, all plays a factor in these, in these different things. So the best breaststrokers have a very low stroke count. In Adam Peaty's case, he's only taking 20 strokes on the first length, 25 on the second length. The average distance per stroke is about two meters at a rate of one per second. That's about 60 strokes per minute if you wanna do the math that way. Finally, the best athletes, and Adam Peaty is maybe the best example in the world of this, they have a lot of power. The best athletes are able to take athleticism out of the water and transfer it into the water so that they can produce times like this. Why is that? It's a combination of strength training, flexibility, rehabilitation, and just approaching your training with a more explosive and plyometric nature so that way you can apply this power into the water. They say Adam Petey is a true athlete in the sense that he's able to combine all of these attributes out of the water and all of that training and hard work and apply it into the water in a race like this. So that was Whiteboard Wednesday. That's a quick look at how Adam Petey can go a 57.1 in the 100 meter long course breaststroke. This is 2018 and we're all excited for what he can do in 2019 and 2020. I think the 56 mark is what we'd like to see next but the best athletes in the world, including Adam Peaty, are gonna be the ones that'll show us how it's done. That was Whiteboard Wednesday. We'll catch you guys later. Bye.